On this edition of Fulton Law and Justice, Fulton sits down with neighboring solicitors and prosecutors. We'll tell you why. And a juvenile court is working to keep families together and kids out of trouble. We'll have tales about this special unit in a segment titled, Our Children, Our Future. I'm Douglas Bell. Fulton Law and Justice starts right after the break. Stay with us. Welcome to Fulton Law and Justice, your inside look at the work of Fulton's Justice Partners. I'm Douglas Bell. Hundreds of prosecutors from all across the country descend on Fulton County for a national conference aimed at keeping communities safe. Three of the prosecutors are right here in our FGTV studio in this edition of Restorative Justice. For over 35 years, one particular national organization of prosecutors has committed itself to ensuring equal representation when it comes to upholding the law. I'm talking about the National Black Prosecutors Association. In 2019, this group is calling Fulton County home as we come together for its national conference. Deputy Solicitor Kenya Johnson sits down with icons of our past and leaders of our future in this edition of Restorative Justice. Thank you, Solicitor Gamage. When you talk about prosecutors in the metro area, my three guests immediately come to mind for residents in the city of Atlanta, DeKalb County, and Fulton County. That's because between the three of them, they have tried hundreds, if not thousands, of cases collectively. I'm talking about Mr. Raines Carter, the longest serving solicitor anywhere in the country who hails from the city of Atlanta. Mrs. Donna Coleman Stribling, DeKalb County Solicitor General, and Mr. Keith Lamar, Jr., Deputy District Attorney right here in Fulton County. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for, Thank having, you us. for having us. Mr. Carter, you've been an appointed head prosecutor in Atlanta for over 35 years. Congratulations on such a career achievement. Tell me, from the perspective of an African-American prosecutor, have there been any landmark changes since you first began over 30 years ago? Absolutely, positively. When I think in terms of over 30 years ago, there weren't many African-American prosecutors, not only in the state of Georgia, but all over the country. We have grown and we have learned how to work together. And I believe that we can go to the next level in terms of engaging the community that's been the most revolutionary change. We are now part of the community and not just sitting at a table dealing with the community. Ah, that's a great strides in those many years. Mr. President, uh, as the president of the National Black Prosecutors Association, please tell us about the mission and work of MBPA. Well, thank you so much. The mission is basically to make sure that we highlight the excellence in our profession. We would like to have better retention of our African American prosecutors and let people know that, you know, as an African American prosecutor, you can do more for your community. I love it. I, I'm hearing that uh, in the years since MBPA, prosecutors are becoming more involved and it's important to hear from prosecutors versus just defense attorneys. Uh, our side is very important as well. Solicitor Coleman Stribling, as an elected prosecutor, can you tell us what does MBPA mean to you? Well, the National Black Prosecutors Association has allowed us an opportunity to get together and connect, um, to learn from each other, to learn what's happening in other cities, to learn um, how other offices are dealing with certain situations. Certainly, um, one a, about two years ago, I had the opportunity to attend one of the conferences. And from that, I actually went back to meet with one of the prosecutors, lead prosecutors in another city to learn about some of their diversion programs. Wow, so you all are sharing information. Absolutely. Tell us, as a prosecutor, are there any issues uh, that are culturally specific to African Americans in regard to prosecution that you've identified? Well, if you look in, in my area, in DeKalb County, um, most of the defendants that come and I see in my courtroom are African American. And what we know is that when they leave our courtroom, they have no idea how to get a job. They have no idea how to move forward with this situation after. And sometimes, in, in all honesty, um, there are, of course, a number of individuals who have been there before and um, they're now dealing with a criminal conviction. But some situations uh, they can recover from. 
And our job and I think our mission is now to work with the community, just like Mr. Carter said, and to learn from that and to help them move forward with the situation. Uh, thank you. And so uh, as the regional director of the National Black Prosecutors Association, I know that all of the offices represented here today are going to be co-hosts to the upcoming conference. President Lamar, can you tell us what's in store for the hundreds of prosecutors that will come here to Atlanta? Well, I'm very excited about the conference. We're going to have some great speakers. We're getting up to 23 hours of CLE credits, which is what every attorney needs to have in order to stay an attorney. Uh, besides that, we're going to have some great awards that we're giving out to different people. We're going to highlight some of the new prosecutors around the nation so people can see that there are more than just people you see on TV. We have new, young, a lot of energy elected uh, African-American officials, and I can't wait to see them. That's certainly great to hear. Mr. Carter, uh, how does it feel to hear that Georgia has the highest number of prosecutors nationwide and that uh, Atlanta has grown to be an example in the field of prosecution? My heart is just overflowed with pride and joy. Just look around this table and to see us as African American prosecutors. And when I think back over 30 years ago, how we would just look around to see just one other person, I can't tell you how happy I am, how happy to be a part of Georgia being in the lead of this. And we're going to continue to grow. And this whole concept of engaging the community is what we should be all about. I never thought as a prosecutor it would be about hey, let's help people. Well, that's exactly what we're doing in the right way. Absolutely, and you have been a great example in your career. Uh, Solicitor Coleman Stribling, as a newly elected prosecutor in your first term, uh, where do you see the future of criminal prosecution overall as it relates to disenfranchised communities? Well, first, I, and I, I think that um, what you will see is what has happened in Atlanta. You will see the leadership maybe looking more diverse. Um, you will see more women in prosecution. You will see um, more leaders that, are, that represent the community. And what that means is that um, we look forward. We, don't, we look to our past and we learn from it, but we look forward. We learn from the programs that we have. Is we don't just prosecute. We bring the community in and figure out how to feel and, and fulfill and resolve some of the issues that we see in society. And I think that's what our best work will look like in our future. Well, the future looks certainly bright with uh, diverse representation. Thank you. So before we wrap up, I, I'd like to get any final thoughts from you, if we can start with President Lamar. Right. Well, th once again, thank you for having me. Uh, thank you, Solicitor Gamis, for having us here on the show. Uh, one thing that I want to really want to point out is that it's an honor to be on the stage with these people. Uh, Y'all have done great work. And uh, if we could just live up to what y'all have done so far, you know, we'll be okay. So I'm really happy to be here. And thank you, Kenya, for having us on the show. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you. Um, this is an experience, as you stated before, this is my first term. And having the ability to reach out not just within um, the local area, but also to reach out nationally to some of those elected prosecutors has been um, an extraordinary, ex extraordinary experience. And I certainly um, look forward to building these relationships and continuing on with the MBPA. Thank you. Um, Solicitor Carter. And thank you all from the bottom of my heart. If there's a legacy to leave, I'm looking at it with the leadership of people like our Solicitor General Keith Gamage and yourself and my fellow prosecutors, I, I couldn't be happier. Thank you so much for this chance. Thank you, and it seems like uh, MBPA has fulfilled its mission to bring prosecutors together and to uh, collaborate for the next steps uh, in prosecution. So thank you all so much for joining us today and for your groundbreaking work in prosecution. As a board member of the organization, I am proud of the work that we continue to do, and with your help, uh, it has truly been an honor. Now, back to Solicitor Gamage. Thank you, Solicitor Carter, Solicitor Coleman Stribling, and National Black Prosecutors Association President Keith Lamar for joining us today. For more information about the Fulton County Solicitor General's Office, you can reach us at the Office of Fulton County Solicitor General, 404-612-4800, or via our website at FultonRestorativeJustice.org. As we close, we invite you to join us on our website and social media. Be sure to sign up to receive the Gamage Report, our newsletter. For restorative justice, I'm Keith Gamage. Until next time, please be safe. Thanks, Solicitor. When we come back, a look at how juvenile court is trying to preserve families and youth. 
Stay with us. On any given day, Fulton's juvenile court is packed with attorneys, social workers, and families all trying to figure out the best outcome and course of action for young people. But the court handles more than just cases. It also works with civic partners whose mission is to preserve families and the community. In our next segment titled, Our Children, Our Future, here to explain is Thomas O'Connor. At Juvenile Court, we host a whole menu of programming for children, families, and interested members of the public. The Youth, Family, and Community Preservation Unit is at the forefront of this effort. It develops programs, it creates community partnerships, and it hosts events throughout the year. Here to talk to us today about the Youth, Family, and Community Preservation Unit and its programming is Karen Cloud, a court program administrator with Juvenile Court. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, Tom. So to begin, programming, it's a big kind of catch-all word. Can you break that down for us, what it involves? Well, Tom, for, um, for our unit, programming is, we're actually in a very exciting time at Juvenile Court. Um, our unit is pretty new, and so for us, our main charges are really to make sure that we have quality services and resources for our children and families who um, are involved with the court. We want to make sure that we are really engaging the community and cultivating strong uh, community partnerships. Um, and we also are cultivating our own programming. Um, when we see a need um, that uh, there's not a service or agency in the community that meets that need, we really try to look inward um, to figure out how we can, can meet that need as a court. Um, so it's a very exciting time for us. Um, we, we, um, we really are excited about some of the programming that we have. As big of a, a kind of a job as it is, we're very excited about the work ahead of us. That's great, and um, specifically you're with the Youth, Family, and Community Preservation Unit. Can you tell us a little more about that? So we're a unit of four, um, so we, we are mighty but small, um, and we really are focused on um, really kind of three things. We're, we're focused on identifying services. Um, many of the children and families who come to the juvenile court are in need of services that vary um, from uh, counseling or therapy to tutoring to um, uh, uh, needing uh, psychological examinations or just needing a mentoring program um, and so we are kind of responsible for identifying those services looking for those services in the community once we identify the services we are responsible for vetting those services and really making sure that they are appropriate for our children and families and that the services that they're offering are really going to be beneficial to our children and families um, and then thirdly our main charge is looking at the data once our children are involved in, with these programs, looking at the impact that the programs are really having, um, looking for gaps, looking for any um, areas that we need to improve upon so that we can, again, our, our overall goal is really to make sure that we are providing the best quality services to our children and families. And speaking of the community, um, part of our mission at Juvenile Court is to involve the community in our activities. Would you mind telling us about some of the um, program partnerships with communities, um, community groups that you have going on? Well, one of our most exciting partnerships that we started recently is a partnership with the Serenby Institute, which is the philanthropic arm of the Serenby Farms, which is in South Fulton County. Um, and what uh, the Serenby Institute has brought to the juvenile court is really a year's worth of, of programming that they want to involve our youth in. Um, everything from visiting the farms and the ranch that they have down there um, to the animal farm to painting sessions. They're going to take our kids to um, the Civil Rights Museum. They also do a number of productions, apparently fabulous productions, um, down at Serenby Farms. And so we've been invited to come down and take part in some of the productions that they're going to do. Um, so, you know, and they came to us with this um, um, project. So it's it, we're very excited about it. We recently had our, our first excursion and the kids were just um, very blown away by their experience with the horses and just being in this new community. It's only about 40 minutes south of the city, but it was it was like a world away for many of our kids. And uh, some of the parents went as well. And so now we kind of have a uh, there's a battle to get on the list to make sure they get signed up for the next <laughs> excursion. 
That's exciting, that, and that's really great to hear. Um, you know, a change of scenery can do wonders. Right. And it, you know, in terms of partnerships, you guys are always exploring opportunities for more partnerships. Correct. So tell us a little bit about that process. So that's really, I think, the probably the most fun aspect of the work that we do, cultivating partnerships. Um, we have the opportunity to attend numerous activities and events throughout the, um, the community. Uh, we're always invited to attend community meetings, whether it's a neighborhood meeting or, you know, meetings with um, Grady Hospital or just there are just various, you'd be surprised at the, the, the different meetings that we get invited to attend and, and the different people who attend the meetings. Um, there's so many, I usually go into a meeting thinking that I'm going to be talking about one thing and I meet three people um, who are bringing completely different ideas to me. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, that's really the fun part of our job is trying to identify who could our next partner be. Um, we're looking into partnerships right now with the Junior League. We're looking into a partnership with the U.S. Attorney's Office. Um, we're looking at partnerships with the Solicitor's Office. So we, we really are, are looking to partner with um, governmental agencies, community programs that, again, have our same mission in mind. What can we do to really enhance the lives of our children and families in the, in the Atlanta area? Well, that's excellent, and you know, working together can really make all the difference in the world. Um, you know, speaking of events, y you all also plan your own um, calendar of events. Like, a, basically, you always have something going on no matter what month it is. So, yes. tell us a little about that. <laughs> well, again, that's the second part, the, the second most fun part of our job. Um, we decided that. Um, in addition to the services and, and, and resources that, you know, kind of come into the court to work with our families, that we really wanted to host our own events on a regular basis to encourage community engagement with the court, to invite community partners into the court to see the work, the wonderful work that we're doing. Uh, we wanted to make sure that in addition to, you know, some of the therapies that our kids are receiving, that they also had some fun stuff to do. Um, so we, we've looked to community partners to um, host our own programs in the court. We're also doing some parental engagement. We're doing some trainings for parents to help them better understand how to navigate um, certain issues like special education or um, just how to kind of deal with some of their own issues as it relates to how they relate to their kids. Um, so, you know, our, our calendar of events really gives us, again, the opportunity to partner. We recently co-hosted Law Day with the Gate City Bar Association, the Atlanta Bar Association, the uh, Fulton County Courts Committee. Uh, we're looking forward to having uh, another day in court where we invite different businesses and community partners into the court to just, again, to, to observe court, to kind of meet our children and families. Uh, we really want to give the community an opportunity to get to know who our kids and families are um, and to have a better understanding of the worlds that they that they live in um, and and um, hopefully that will kind of pull on the heartstrings so that they'll cut they'll want to come into the court and really volunteer and, and help us in our mission yeah it, it takes a village it absolutely does definitely and so to bring it back around how does all this kind of help and support the children and families we serve well I think engagement is really the most important piece for us. Um, I think that when we, as a juvenile court, um, we let families and children and the community know that we are really here to be a resource. Uh, we are really here to do whatever we can to promote success and to promote um, achievement and to really promote supporting our community. Um, and we're going to do that by engaging you more. We're going to do that by engaging community partners to come in and, and assist us in that effort. Um, I think that, that you can't have anything but a positive result for children and families. And so we try to tailor everything that we do around our mission, around our mission to support families, to support the community. Um, and so, you know, as we are creating programs, that, that's always in the back of our mind. What, how is this going to enhance the work that we're already trying to do for our children and families? And in closing, is there anything we didn't cover that you'd like to add? Well, I think, um, you know, again, it's, it's, I cannot stress the importance of, you know, taking the opportunity to come and learn more about the work that we're doing. Come and learn, um, again, about the, the children and families who are walking through our doors and under, having a better understanding of um, the circumstances that they are, they're living in and how we're trying to, to help with that and how we're trying to be supportive in that. Um, and I encourage people to, you know, to, to come and volunteer. Come and take part in the effort to support our families and our children. And I think that, you know, once folks, you know, come in and get to know our kids, get to know our families, um, you know, there will be a different outlook on, on the work that we're doing and, and just our children in the community. Thank you, Karen Cloud, and thank you once again for joining us and for all that you do at Juvenile Court. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for watching Our Children, Our Future. 
Looking for more information about juvenile court programming? Visit our website. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Tom. We'll be right back. Fulton County has committed itself to serving its residents in six priority areas. The strategic goal for Fulton's justice partners is making sure that all people are safe. On Fulton Law and Justice, we show you how Fulton's law enforcement and justice partners are doing that every day in how they serve and in the programs they provide to enhance the lives of all people, young and old. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this edition of Fulton Law and Justice. I'm Douglas Bell. We'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.